Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 714. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I am revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, Chris Fallone. Hey, Chris, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready to go. Air-cooled ready. All right. Love the air cool. It goes way back into my youth. Chris <laughs> Vallone is the owner of Classic VW Bugs in Congress, New York. He's created a global following with his vintage VW Bug restorations and his how-to restoration video tips educating enthusiasts like you and me around the world. Chris has earned numerous awards with his beautifully restored VWs, including being accepted as the first bug ever to the Fairfield Concorde Elegance. His cars have also been on the lawns of the Greenwich Concorde Elegance, the Lime Rock Concorde, and the Hemmings Concorde. His restorations have appeared in Hot VW Magazines, Air Cool Classics Magazine, Volks World, Fox News, USA Today, and the Journal News. He's also worked on collector and celebrity Jerry Seinfeld's 1956 Oval VW. So, Chris, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment, share a little bit more about your business and, of course, your passion for VWs and automobiles? Absolutely. Um, it all started back in college. I went to school for fine arts to be an animator. I grew up on Looney Tunes cartoons and uh, <laughs> Walt too. Disney cartoons. That's it. And uh, I always thought in college that the artist needs a bug. And I wanted to be the artist with the bug going to school. So I commuted to college back and forth. And uh, it was my mission to find a beetle during my college years to hold my gear, my portfolio bins that I would take you know, to and from class. Yeah. Uh, and I was even starting filmmaking at the time too. So I would have camera gear um, and tripods and things like that to throw in the back of the car. I just wanted to be that person with a bug. <laughs> and uh, you know, I did 10 years of film after college. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote and directed my own stuff for a while and I wanted to be like Spielberg. But you know, realizing that uh, when you get older, you get a little wiser, <laughs> yeah. and uh, nice. that is a lottery ticket. You know, it's yeah. it's not guaranteed. Yep. So towards the end of my uh, short career there, about ten year career, I started looking towards internet marketing and starting a business on the internet. Mm -hmm. I did not want to work for anybody. So I have two older sisters that are. Uh, have their own businesses. My father had his old business after he was uh, retired from NYPD. So I, I wasn't built to be under a roof, you know, <laughs> yeah. under somebody else. Yeah. And so I looked towards eBay and I told my dad, you know, while we were, while I was filming, I was, I was tinkering with bugs here and there. And I never really thought to turn it into a business. And so one time I, I sold a film internationally and the money I needed to pay my lawyer and my uh, film rep that was out in California, the fees for selling that film, I didn't have it. Mm. So I was a starving artist. So I said to my dad, you know, I, I think I got to sell one of the bugs we got. And uh, sure enough, I turned towards eBay and I honed up on some courses on how to do it right. And I, I said to myself, I said, you know, I have I have a film background. I got gear. I got an editing suite. Why don't I film the car? Yeah. And cut it to music, titles and effects and throw it up on eBay. Well, long, you know, long story short, we did that. We made money on that car and we looked at each other and said, you know what? Maybe this could be something. <laughs> a business is born. <laughs> That's it. And, you know, from there on, I mean, when I first told my dad I wanted to do an eBay business, he looked at me like, what are you crazy? I don't even know what that is, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, my dad's old school. So uh, it was a wonderful thing. And that's how we started pretty much and started out of a one car garage in a, my parents were living in a gated community. I was living with them still. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, after a while, though, those people in, the, in that community did not like to see four, five, six bugs parked around uh, them. No, the homeowners <laughs> association was probably coming down on your folks pretty hard. Exactly. So, but uh, we had to start somewhere. Yeah. So. so many great businesses have started in a garage. When you look back at some of the incredibly famous people like Steve Jobs with Apple and Hewlett Packard and uh, Walt Disney, I mean, all these great companies started out of garages. So uh, you had a great start for sure, even though you got kicked out of the gated community. Yep. I understand. Yep. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote. This is some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. And it's a very nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars Yeah. So Chris, take the wheel. Quote that I've been following, uh, I guess, 
for a little while now is we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Mm, love it. So that's from uh, George Bernard Shaw. Mm -hmm. And I saw that quote. My girlfriend works as a vet tech in an animal hospital. Oh, okay. And I saw that quote on a picture with two dogs playing in the beach, <laughs> you know, and I said to myself, that's, that's like me and my dad. Yeah. And, you know, I, I said, when I come to work, I'm playing with toys. Mm. Uh, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I come here, I look forward to my Mondays. Yeah. To come here and say, you know, what are we going to find this week? You know, what adventure are we going to, you know, trek out to to go bring back from a garage or a barn out there? Or, yeah. you know, what are we going to dig up in a car that we're stripping that we find, you know, underneath the carpet or the mats or something? There's always something very interesting with these cars. They have such history. People have such memorable times with them. Mm -hmm. It's very nostalgic. Uh, anywhere I go, I go pump up gas with a Beetle and there's somebody coming up to you to talk to you. Oh, yeah. You found the secret sauce to life, my friend. That's for sure. That's what Cars yeah is all about. People that have found their passion and wrapped it into their vocation. And boy, when you can do that, life is definitely bliss for sure. So, And I love your comments about finding things in cars. I bought an old car once and I took the back door panel off to correct something and down inside there, it had fallen through an ashtray opening was a little matchbox car that yep. you kind of thought that some little kid was sitting in the back, lost that car in there and... Where did my car go? <laughs> After sure. I ate it. So, yeah, lots of great things. I've had some friends that work in restoration business that have collections of coins and things they found from cars and all the, all the cool stuff. A few years ago, we found, and it was actually, it was showcased on our local news here, I found Army dog tags. Oh, my God. Yep. And uh, it was in a 54 Beetle that we grabbed out of Mississippi. Wow. And I threw that up on Facebook and... I mean, I had the media here the next, like in an hour. <laughs> they, were, they, they were wondering. And sure enough, they looked up those texts and that fellow was still alive. And oh, my gosh. In, in Texas. And we communicated with him and uh, he knew the numbers verbatim off that tag. Wow. So what was really funny was he's, uh, there was a dent above the um, – like the front header where the sun visor is. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he said – he's like, is there a dent there? I'm like, Yeah. He's like, well, yeah, that's that's my head hitting that when I went off a cliff with the car. No way. Yep, and the car hit its nose and stood straight up after it hit the bottom. Oh, my gosh. That, <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. You know, I have a, a, a good friend who's going to be a future guest here on Cars, yeah. He works for Denison International, uh, which Denison has been a guest on the show. His name's Tim Willard, and he works on some really fascinating old cars. And just last week, he posted a picture on Facebook. He was working on a 1951 Kaiser and inside the door handle, which was wrapped in leather, they took the leather off. There was a plastic door handle underneath. was a note, and it said, built by T.V. Smith, Toledo, Ohio, 8863. And so wow. obviously that car was restored again in 63, and somebody rebuilt that door handle. But, yeah, there's all sorts of magical treasures we can find in it's old beautiful. cars. Yeah, very, very yep. fun. Uh -huh. 